They think all those sexual violence that they're subjecting the women to, this mysterious drug that they're giving, forced sterilization, collective punishment through gang rape, are the method that they're liberating the Uyghur woman. I mean, just let that think in. Today I sit down with Uyghur American human rights advocate Nuri Turkel, vice chair of the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom and senior fellow at the Hudson Institute. What kind of nation can exist when you target and destroy their children and women? Nuri Turkel was born in a Chinese re-education camp. His new book is titled No Escape, The True Story of China's Genocide of the Uyghurs. It's a chilling look into China's techno-autocracy and what can result when a communist regime is allowed to run unchecked for decades. And the Chinese, as you know, spend more money on domestic security than national defense. Why would you do that? Why are you fearful of your own population? This is American Thought Leaders, and I'm Yanya Kelly. Nuri Turkel, such a pleasure to have you back on American Thought Leaders. Thank you very much for having me on. Nuri, I just finished reading your book, your memoir. It's beautifully done. Thank so you. So I'm going to, I'll, I'll say it right to out to, to everyone. Thank you. Um, I, I want to start actually where you start in the book because you uh, bring the readers in really quickly with this example of a man who's being interrogated in a ch- tiger chair. Uh, maybe you can tell me what that is in a moment, but and and then there's this whole kind of newfound technocratic regime that's working to kind of ex, you know use the information that he he actually passed on. So tell me the story. And the story that I started the book involves an individual who were there, uh, committed no crime, uh, having a foreign contact, and simply there for a family visit were picked up by the Chinese security. And uh, he was in the verge of being uh, uh, sent to the concentration camp. And, and the, the, the method that they used was very, very um, uh, 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 concerning because they relied on the past travel history, foreign contact, and even some social contacts to create this massive database that this individual caught up with. And, and while this was all happening, the machine was spitting out more names relied or based on or generated with the help of something called Integrated Joint Operating Platform, mm. IJOP, that was rever- in- reverse engineered and reported by Human Rights Watch a couple of years ago. That part of the story was uh, investigated and reported by ICIJ, uh, International Consortium of, on Investigative Journalism. Uh, that stem from the leaked documents. Um, some people call it uh, operating manual. Some people call it um, uh, Nazis, uh, Nazi Germany's playbook or pages from the playbook. Nonetheless, that particular uh, leaked documents uh, was initially reported, uh, investigated by Bethany Allen Ibrahim, Ibrahimian. Uh, coincided and verified some of the stories that are heard from the camp survivors, direct, indirect victims of the ongoing uh, genocide uh, in the Uyghur homeland, East Turkestan. It's such an incredible thing because basically this guy gets picked up by Chinese security, right? And they start pumping him for information and get pulling all sorts of, you know, the, some of the things that you described. And altogether, they managed to generate a database of 20,000 contacts, you know, people who he, he was, you know, one step away from or two steps away from. And, but not only that, they actually go after most of them. That's the part that's mind-blowing. What happened was in, in a 10 days period in 2017, the Chinese security um, uh, put out an arrest warrant for 20,000 people, or more than 20,000 people. But the police were not able to identify, locate all of them. They were scratching their heads, cussing at each other, and then they come up with about 17,000. In just 10 days, short period of time, 17,000 people's lives are shattered. No one ever bothered to ask, what crime did they commit? And no one bothered to ask, what will happen to them in the future? So the lives of those people are so meaningless to the Chinese uh, uh, architects of the, uh, today's nightmare. So when you discuss the significant number of people being uh, disappeared or affected by the ongoing genocidal campaign, most people find it um, uh, incredible that that many people can be rounded up. There's a quota. 
And this is all generated by machine. And this, this tech authoritarianism, this uh, uh, pervasive surveillance, initially starting with the data collect, personal data collection, that includes sound samples, voice samples, um, uh, iris samples, uh, DNA samples. They created a massive database starting early 2012 all the way to 2016. So people using WeChat, communicating, traveling, passport application. Uh, even uh, uh, signing up in a uh, innocuous tour, uh, uh, tourist sightseeing around the world. If you happen to be one of those 26 countries, including the United States, you're part of the IGA, uh, IJOP uh, database. That was the basis for the Chinese security to start running on people. So this is how it started, and it's still ongoing. And because of this IJOP, uh, the Uyghur uh, uh, individuals on the ground made a conscious decision to discontinue or deleting uh, foreign contacts, the children, even some instances, instances uh, spouses, uh, uh, in order to avoid being caught up in this Like network. deleting them from their devices, like yeah. computers and cell phones. Because, and they, because you're subject to a regular uh, phone data scan. Uh, if you have somebody uh, in your phone uh, contacts, or if you have a history of text messaging and calling, uh, if you end up being, uh, if your device is scanned by police, there's a chance that you'll be end up being in the camp. So the parents, a lot of Uyghurs around the world, uh, when you talk to average Uyghur, he will tell you why and, and how long that person is not able to um, speak with their parents. In one heart-wrenching story, that the president of the World Group Congress, Dolkan Issa, found out about his missing father, a mother, who died in a concentration camp through a Radio Free Asia reporting. He had no contact with his family whatsoever. And this is happening in our society here in the United States and Canada. There are thousands of the Uyghur uh, individuals in diaspora still to this day cannot have a normal, uh, regular contact because of IJOP. Well, so I want to talk a little bit more about this database because it's very important, something not a lot of people know about. Before we go there, you know, you are a pretty unique person in this country. Um, and I think you've actually played a pretty important role in helping people understand the reality of what the Chinese Communist Party does to its own people, notably the Uyghurs, but not just. Yeah. And so, but. I want to talk a little bit about how you got here. So a little bit of this memoir. I mean, you were actually born in a re-education camp. And that's, that's not something a lot of people can fathom easily. I never thought um, and never imagined talking about my uh, arriving to this world the way that I have almost daily, uh, if it was not for the new type of uh, camps that the Chinese uh, Communist Party set up. Uh, of course, that's a different type of camp, but what is similar is the method, uh, the thinking, particularly this uh, terribly, um, uh, particularly this um, uh, a, a word that I have very uh, allergic reaction, uh, which is transformation, uh, the thought transformation. Uh, re-education. Uh, they have done this to Falun Gong practitioners, they've done this to uh, Tibetan monks, they've done this to uh, Christian uh, underground Christian leaders in the past and now they're doing it whole uh, in an industrial scale to the Uyghur uh, people. But back then uh, it was the Red Guard. Today is the Communist Party. That's probably the only difference. That uh, camp that I was born in and spent few several months of my life was resembling or copying more like a Stalin's gulag. Mm -hmm. And today's camp more, more uh, shared a lot of similarities with the Nazi camps, concentration camps, the Dachau, the Auschwitz. This has been an ongoing uh, repressive policies, just with a different name, a different excuse. <laughs> <laughs>